today I'm going to talk about the latest James Bond film, No Time to Die. So I'm very excited about this. Um, I've seen the movie today. I've watched it this afternoon. Um, I've made notes right here. And I am ready to discuss this video, uh, this movie with you, and just dive into, you know, everything that I felt with this movie. So, without further ado, let's get started right away, shall we? <clears throat> anyway, so yes, No Time to Die, the new James Bond film, it's finally here. After a extremely long wait, man, we had to wait long for this movie to come out. Um, of course, you know, of course, it had everything to do with COVID, so you know, it is what it is. But it's finally here, and this afternoon, I got to see the movie. Now, <coughs> sorry about that. I have a bit of a you know, I have a bit of a, fr a frog in my throat, so, you know, I hope you'll forgive me for that. Anyway, so, yes, uh, No Time to Die, uh, the newest James Bond film, which is directed by Kerry Fukunaga, who is also, of course, responsible for giving us the new... Uh, <coughs> there we go again. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. It's a bit... Um, but Kerry uh, Fuginaga, that's what I was saying, who is also responsible, of course, for giving us the new uh, It films, you know, It Part 1 and Part 2. So, there was that. But, um, yeah, No Time to Die, it's the latest James Bond film. And it's the last James Bond film with Daniel Craig. This is Daniel Craig's swan song. After this, they have to find, you know, another 007 because Daniel Craig is finished. So, um, so before I start telling you what I feel about the movie, I want to go a little bit into the history here because I have absolutely loved Daniel Craig as James Bond. Um, I love the more you know gritty uh, feel of Daniel Craig's Bond. It's more realistic. It's more grounded. Um, he, you know, it's more dusty. He gets wounded a lot more often. I just, I just think it's a very, um, you know, it, it, it embraces kind of like the, you know, the born identity kind of feel, uh, with James Bond. So I really like Daniel Craig as James Bond. Uh, the movies, however, have been very, it's been very... <coughs> There we go again. I'm sorry. I don't know what it is. Um, but the, yeah, the movies for me have been going very, you know, up and down. I mean, uh, Casino Royale was uh, uh, really amazing. I love that film. Quantum of Solace is is terrible. It's an abomination. Uh, it's James Bond meets Days of Our Lives, basically. That's basically what it is. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, Skyfall is damn near perfection, if you ask me. I think Skyfall is absolutely fantastic. Um, and then there was Spectre, of course. And Spectre, it wasn't as bad as the other, gen as, you know, Quantum of Solace. But Spectre was just all over the place. Um, and for a lot of the times, it really felt like a... You know, a greatest hits film, basically. So, so yeah, the the movies have been going, you know, up and down. But overall, you know, Daniel Craig as as Bond has been very very good. It's been amazing. So, no time to die. First, let's start off with this uh, with the the story for uh, the film. What is No Time to Die about? All right, so what is the premise for No Time to Die? All right, so basically the movie starts off uh, with uh, James Bond, um, you know, living a relatively normal life. Um, you know, he has left. Um, he has left MI6. Um, he's quit his job. 
he is no longer you know on her majesty's secret service um he's living you know a normal and relatively you know you know uh happy life uh with uh you know dr madeline swan of course who we've met in um in uh, Spectre, of course, who we've met in Spectre. So he's living a relatively normal and happy life. And we actually, it's a very interesting focus point because we, we get to see James Bond in a state that we haven't seen him in before. It's, it's, it's something they haven't done with James Bond before. And please, for those of you who are going to say it, don't even get me started on the movie on Her Majesty's Secret Service with George Lazenby. That movie is just, just, you know, that that movie is garbage. Anyway, but he's he's real he's living a relatively normal and happy life. Um, but he he's still on the lookout for danger. You know, he still has some of that, you know, secret agent blood in him. You know, because he keeps looking over his shoulder. You know, there is also... Uh, the movie also carries this huge uh, theme of of trust and betrayal. Um, because James Bond, he... You know, even though he's trying, he feels like he can't really trust this, you know, this new happy life completely. Because he is just... He is just so used to having to having secrets and you know to you know to people having secrets. So it he tries, but it's ve it's it's very tough. It's very hard on him. Um, and then basically after someone tries to kill him, there is someone is trying to blow him up at the start of this film. Um, and then we find out uh, we find out that they are you know being chased by these mysterious men um, uh, and then we move a little forward between uh, the, the opening and the actual film which you know it starts four years later basically and basically what happens is that uh, this this doctor uh, who used to work for, MI6, who is who is still working for MI6, but who is a very shady character. Um, this doctor is being kidnapped by all of these, you know, top secret man in black military, you know, people, soldiers, whatever. Um, you know, and all of this somehow collides with each other. Um, and basically this triggers James Bond to come back and basically uh, that's basically how he's forced back into action basically so that's basically how the movie starts that that's basically the premise of this story of this film so so how do I feel about no time to die I really really enjoyed this this film i really enjoyed this film i loved no time to die i thought it was a great film i loved it it was it was great um <clears throat> before before i start with you know everything i liked about it let's go over the negatives first because of course no movie is perfect uh, there are, of course, there are issues, um, uh, just as every movie, basically, you know, no movie is perfect. So I want to get the negative stuff out of the way first, um, and then we can move on to the positive, because I have a lot of good to say about this film. Um, so, so yeah, the negatives. Let's start with the negatives, and I'm going to keep this review as spoiler free as possible all right i'm going to keep it as spoiler free as possible because i want you to be surprised i want you to be you know i want you to go in there unknown and just let you know watch the movie for yourself so okay so the negatives um i basically have only one negative about this film 
which is really surprising. It's really surprising because um, I was going into this movie with my expectations very, very tempered. You know, after a mediocre Spectre, um, I just, I just didn't know what this film was going to be. Um, but as it turns out, I only have one negative about this film. I have one negative. That is it. That's all. So the negative is this. I have one negative. The negative is this. All right. Just, just bear with me. This movie brings back the gadgets into the James Bond franchise. This movie gives James Bond his gadgets back, basically. The gadgets return in this Bond film. Return in this film. And I just feel that it's a very... I just feel like that's a very, very odd and weird and ridiculous choice. Because, you know, because... Here's the thing, the Daniel Craig Bond films, they 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 are much more, you know, they like I said, they are grounded, they are real realistic, they're more, you know, dark and gritty. They just feel they feel more normal, right? You know, James Bond get gets wounded more. It feels more normal and down to earth. Bringing back the gadgets in the in this film just feels very out of place to me it feels to be honest it feels kind of ridiculous and stupid and i i know look i i'm already feeling the hate you know flow over me uh, like 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 emperor palpatine always said like you know the hate is flowing through you i i can already you know People, you know, resenting resenting me for saying this and getting a lot of hate and anger. And, you know, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. So, but I really feel that the gadgets were out of place in this film. Because, you know, simply because the, of the fact that they, they tried so hard to make these James Bond films more realistic than the other ones. I mean, if you go back to like Moonraker and stuff, right? Moonraker. You have, to, I mean, James Bond is going to space in that film, all right? In Moonraker. James Bond is going to space and they, and people shoot at each other, you know, with, you know, guns with laser beams. Guns with laser beams. Ooh, very exciting. It was just getting more and more ridiculous. And, I really applaud them for trying to create a more grounded and realistic bond here. So the fact that they reintroduced the gadgets in this film, which is also the the last Daniel Craig film, it just feels weird and ridiculous to me and it just it feels out of place. It feels out of place and I think that's a big mistake. Look, you know, if you if you want to bring the gadgets back for the next James Bond film, you know, that there, there is going to be there is going to be a next a new James Bond. You know, Daniel Craig is done. There is going to be a new De a James Bond film. You know, if you want to return the gadgets in that in in that film, I, I'm complete I, it's fine. I'm completely fine with that. But but in the context of this uh, in the context of this film and in the context of you know the canvas of the Daniel Craig James Bond films that this this just felt it it was it was unnecessary this was really unnecessary and it really bucked me it really bucked me so so yeah, that's that's what it is. I I didn't like that they brought the gadgets back for for this James Bond film. I felt it was ridiculous and stupid, and it felt out of place. But you know what? 
a lot of other people might feel differently. You might feel differently about it, but for me personally, I thought it was, eh, I don't know. I, I didn't really, I didn't really like it. So, so the gadgets returning for James Bond in this film, that was my big negative. That was my big negative. For me, that was a big no, no, no. But, you know, I have to be honest. A apart from that, apart from that, I absolutely love this film. This film is great. This film is absolutely amazing. And I'm going to talk to you about why I think this was so amazing. <clears throat> and first of all, the, the first point I want to mention why I think this movie is so good is because of the cast. The cast in this film is fantastic. I think the ca the cast is fantastic. They, you know, they tried to give it, they gave it all. They gave it all. They, ha they held nothing back. You know, Daniel Craig is, is amazing. You know, this was, I mean, that, I mean, there is of course Skyfall, but which is amazing, by the way, Skyfall is fantastic. But for, as for this film, No Time to Die, this was Daniel Craig's most emotional performance. This was his most emotional performance. I, I actually teared up uh, <coughs> again, again with a cough. I don't know what it is. I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, da Daniel Craig, this was his most emotional performance. I teared up three times in this film. I teared up three times in this film, which hasn't happened in any Bond movie yet for me, for me, which, and that is amazing. And it's all to do with Daniel Craig. He gives a completely emotional performance in this. And that's a side that, I mean, that's a side of James Bond that we haven't seen before. And it was, I think it's really, really cool. I think it's really well done. Um, I thought, <coughs> I thought it made, um, I thought it made James Bond even more human than uh, it did in Skyfall. He's even more human in this film. He's even more human in this film. You know, he get, uh, he he cries. He gets angry at people. Uh, I mean, really angry. You know. Um, it's it's great it's great so <clears throat> what one of the stars of this film one of the stars of this film is Leah Sadu as Madeline Swan Leah, Leah Sadu is freaking amazing in this film L L Leah Sadu is a powerhouse in this film. She is so good. I mean, she she's a strong and capable woman. She's a strong and capable woman. She, you know, she looks after the people she cares about. She knows how to hold a uh, how to fire a gun and hold a gun. Um, you know, there are also very you know, human aspects to her. It's, it's amazing. Le Leah Sadu was a big surprise for this film. It, it really was. It really was. And, you know, she does, you know, she, she does a fantastic job as Madeline Swan. She does a fantastic job of portraying this woman, um, you know, who is just, who is just completely torn. She's completely torn between her love, her, her love for this man, James Bond, of course. She's completely torn by 
her love for James Bond, and, you know, the secrets that she is, you know, that she is kind of forced, uh, you know, to keep from, from everybody else, basically. And so you can, you can really see the inner struggle there. You can really see the inner struggle. You know, she wants to be, she wants to be honest with Bond, with Bond, but on the other hand, she has a kind of, you know, she has a kind of oath and obligation, you know, to to keep certain things, to keep certain things from him, and it causes a lot of friction between the two, and you know, and she just she just does an amazing job as Madeline Swan. And, you know, and it causes a lot of friction between James Bond and, 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 um, and, uh, Madeline Swan. And, you know, and the chemistry between Leah Sadu and Daniel Craig is just top notch, top notch. It's, it's amazing. It's amazing. It's amazing. So. <clears throat> I also want to talk about Rami Malek, who plays uh, Lucifer Safin. I mean, it's like, isn't it Lucifer Satan? <laughs> it's kind of, it's kind of a funny name. So, it's kind of a funny name, but he plays uh, Lucifer Satin, Safin. Um, and, you know, people, <coughs> damn, what is this? I have no idea. It's a, I, I don't know. It's kind of an itch. I don't know. Um, but Remy Malek is, you know, a lot of people are going to be torn on this. A lot of people are going to be divided about this. Uh, you know, some people are going to hate his performance, and some pe some people are going to love it. I absolutely, I loved his performance as Safin. R Rami Malek does a fantastic job. You know, he is this he is this completely nasty and sadistic character who is who is just completely obsessed with with you know this enormous need for uh for re uh, revenge basically. He's just completely he he's completely devoured by this enormous, you know, sense and need of, you know, him needing to ex ex exact revenge on his enemies, basically. And it, and it makes him a completely nasty and sadistic character. I mean, I, I mean, I'm, it, it's not, you know, it, it, it doesn't reach the level of, uh, Raul Silva in in Skyfall, uh, played by Javier Bardem, of course. It doesn't reach the level of you know uh, Raul Silva, Javier Bardem. You know because that ca that character was more uh, that character was more insidious and 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 charming in a certain way, but you know Safin is just completely. He's completely sadistic and 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 destructive and nasty and it's just it, he does an incredible job portraying the villain, you know. And he has, you know, and he has a very he has a very clear backstory, you know. The the the, the best the best villains are the people that you can you know somehow relate to, and. You know, Safin, he, he's a monster. He's an absolute monster. But in, in a certain way, you get where he's coming from. You get where he's coming from. And that's what makes him a good villain. So it's it's absolutely fantastic. And, you know, and he is, in some scenes, he is absolutely terrifying. You know, there there is a scene where he where he ma uh, he he wears a mask you know uh, a la the perch or uh kind of like eyes wide shut i think it's more of the perch basically but 
there is a scene where he wears basically a, a perch mask, basically, and basically wearing the mask, and he invades a house. I'm not going to. I'm not going to give away any spoilers and stuff like that, but there is a scene where he wears a mask and he infiltrates and invades a house. And it's absolutely terrifying. The, the scene is absolutely terrifying. It, it's nail-biting, really. So, again, amazing job, Remy Malek as, uh, as Safin. So... So the cast is great. The cast is great. <clears throat> um, what I also love about this film is the themes of this film. The themes of No Time to Die. This movie is very much about, about trust and betrayal. That's basically... You know, they're, they're two halves of the same coin, basically. But this movie is very much about trust and and betrayal, basically. Um, you know, J you can see it in James Bond. You can see it in James Bond. He is very torn. You know, on the one hand, he, he wants to, tr you know, he wants to trust Madeline so bad. He wants to trust her so badly, but but his whole history with uh, you know certain woman, of course. I'm not I, again no spoilers. Uh, his history with certain woman, basically, um, made it impossible for him to you know basically completely throw himself into a relationship. You know, like I said, he's always looking over his shoulder. He can, he can never trust uh, someone a hundred percent. You know, even, even the woman he loves, even the woman he clearly loves, like, like Madeline Swan, he, it, it's impossible for him to, to trust her like a hundred percent. So this movie is all about trust and betrayal, you know, uh, with Bond, of course, you know, with Madeline and also with M, he has a big trust issue with, with, with M as well, his boss, you know, Madeline has certain, has certain trust and, and betrayal issues, um, uh, of course, Savin, uh, Savin has a huge deal of, of, of betrayal there, um, so, I really, I really, really love the themes about this film. It, you know, it's about trust and betrayal. And, you know, and in a certain way, I, I guess I can say this. In a certain way, it makes this Bond film maybe the most human James Bond that we have seen so far. I really think so. I really think so. I, I really think this is probably the, the, the this is probably the most human uh, we you know we saw Bond and that that we we will ever get to see Bond probably. This is probably the most human that we will ever see Bond, and it's I, I think it's it's pretty amazing. It's really amazing because it makes. It makes No Time to Die a different James Bond film from the other ones. Um, and I think that's really, I think that's really brave. I think that's really brave because, you know, a lot of directors in the past who dealt with James Bond, a lot of people, you know, they would have never had the guts to, to go there, to actually go there. So... I think I think it's a very brave move and a very bold move as well. I think it's a very bold move and I absolutely love it. I absolutely love it. Oh, there is something on the on the screen here. Hold on. There we go. All right. Oh, it's still there. There we go. Okay. So, um but you know, it's also 
you know, and it it also creates a lot of emotional scenes. There are a lot of emotional scenes in this film. There is one scene in particular. There is one scene in particular. And this is one of the three times I teared up, okay? This is one of the th three times I, I teared up. There is a scene with Madeline and James Bond. Um, and it takes place at a train station, all right? I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna tell you where in the film or, you know, at which point or whatever. But there is a scene with Madeline and James Bond at a train station. Um, and that scene is just, it was so extremely powerful and emotional um, that, you know, I thought it was, I, I thought it was great storytelling. I thought it was great storytelling and a wonderful scene. And, uh, and I teared up. I teared up. So there are some really emotional scenes in this film as well um, because of, you know, the themes of, you know, trust and betrayal. So, yeah, I thought it was, uh, I thought it was great. Uh, let's see, what else can I talk about here? Let's see. I think I've had everything there. Okay, so uh, one more thing I want to talk to you about. I have one more thing I want to talk to you about, and that is the action. The action in this film is phenomenal. I mean, it's fantastic. You know, the whole opening scene of the film, I mean, I, I can say this because, you know, it's already out there on YouTube and in the, in the trailers and stuff. But the whole opening of, of the film, basically, is insane. It's insane. It's, it's, it's great. It's a great action scene. And uh, I absolutely loved it. It was completely wild. And this movie has some great action. There is actually an action scene or a chase scene in the uh, uh, in the marshes and and in the in the woods basically, uh, yeah, in, in in the woods, in the woods and in the marshes. There is a sort of action chase scene which was absolutely mind blowing. It was it was so good. So the action was just. Yeah, what, what can I say about the action? The action was just, you know, top-notch. And the... A <coughs> Again, what is it with me? I have no idea. It's, um... I don't know. Don't, don't worry. It, it's not COVID. It's not COVID, people. It's not COVID. But anyway, I don't know what it is. But, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but the action is great. And, um... And you know what? You can you can actually see what happens. You can actually you know see what happens. You can you can follow the action, uh, which was a huge problem in uh, a Quantum of Solace, for example. So so yeah, great action. What else can I say about this film? I think I talked about pretty much. Uh, everything I wanted to talk about here. So in closing, in closing, <clears throat> so in closing, how do I feel about No Time to Die, the latest James Bond film? How do I feel about No Time to Die? I absolutely love this film. I love this movie. I think it's, I think it's amazing. I really, really love it, and I think it's, I think it's a fantastic movie uh, in the James Bond franchise, and um, and it should be applauded. And you know, it's again, it's a shame that we had to wait so long, um, because you know, it's it's, you know, it has it has a rough, you know, it has a rough pad ahead, path ahead. It has a rough road ahead because I really hope that this movie is going to make money. I really do. I really hope this movie is going to make money. But you know what? It it has nothing to do with the quality 
because this movie is an absolute blast. I absolutely love this film. Um, you know, with the exception of the of the one big issue I had, which I already discussed. But apart from that, I, I, I thought this movie was incredible. Um, there are some people who are going to complain about, you know, it, it, this movie is almost three hours long. All right. This movie is almost three hours long. And some people are going to complain about that, like, man, it's too long. And, um, and, you know, that's, that. It, it is what it is. I personally have no problem with that. I don't believe in running time or whatever. I don't believe in that shit. You know, for me, a movie takes as long as it has to take. That's, that's my mental state about it. A movie takes as long as it has to take you know whether it's an hour and a half or three hours or two two and a half hours you know i don't believe in 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 running times a movie takes as long as it needs to take um and i didn't i didn't find it too long but some people are going to they are going to find it too long but you know it is what it is i guess it's it's all subjective so but yeah, apart from the one major issue I had with it, the, this is an incredible movie. I absolutely loved it. Uh, I think this is the perfect uh, swan song for uh, Daniel Craig. Um, wh wh where do I rank this film? It, it's, you know, it's hard. Where do I, I think... You know what? It's it's not it's not that hard. It's not that hard. You know, Skyfall is still my favorite of the Daniel Craig films. That's that's just the way that's just the way it is. Skyfall is still my favorite uh, Daniel Craig James Bond film. I mean, Skyfall is fantastic. Skyfall Skyfall is fantastic. Um, but I have to say, I, I think this is my number two, actually. I, th I think this is my second favorite of, of the Daniel Craig Bond films, which is so funny because for a long time it was Casino Royale, but I really think that this movie is my sec my second favorite Daniel Craig Bond film because here's the thing this movie is just so this movie is really emotional and it portrays a very very human James Bond it's it again like I said it's the most human we we've ever seen James Bond and I think that is an I, I think that is a, a an astonishing accomplishment I think that's an incredible accomplishment and uh, because I, I've never seen that anywhere in in any James Bond movie so it's it's uh, it's really something and um, I, I think because of that it's I, I I think because of that just because it's such a very because it's such a human and emotional story and movie, I think this is going to be my second favorite movie of the Daniel Craig films. So, yeah. No Time to Die. Great, great film. I can't say it enough. Great film. My ranking for this movie. My ranking for this movie. Um, it's easy. I'm going to give it four stars out of five. It's 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 just astonishing. It's really it's really great. It's really something. Um, so yeah, four stars four stars out of five. Just great film. And um, you know everybody who's a James Bond fan has to watch this. Everybody who's a James Bond film uh, fan has to watch this. So go. <coughs> Holy crap! What is it? Um, but yeah, again, if you're a James Bond fan, 
go and see this because it's it's really amazing and you really have to see this on on the big screen because there is some pretty crazy stuff happening so you have to watch this on the big screen so go out and watch it because it's really worth it and uh, if you're a James Bond fan it's sort of you know you kind of have to so yeah that that's that's where it is um no Time to Die, great film, four stars out of five, go and see it. Um, but anyway, let me know in the comment section down below, what did you think? Uh, have you already seen No Time to Die? Did you not see it? If you did see it, uh, did you love it as much as me? Or did you hate it? Uh, if, you, if you did hate it, tell me why, we can discuss and debate. Of course, please keep it spoiler free. Um, but yeah, tell me why you didn't like it. We can discuss and debate. Do you agree with my points? Do you disagree? Again, if you disagree, tell me why we can discuss and debate. Again, spoiler free. Uh, do you have any movies that you want to recommend for me to, uh, you know, to me to, re to review and talk about? Let me know in the comment section down below. I want to know your thoughts, opinions, theories, ideas as always. Anyway, um, thank you for watching. I'll be back with another video as soon as possible, of course. I'm sorry about the cough.